As the sun rises over the rocky buttes of the Wildcat Hills, one of the most diverse ecosystems anywhere begins another day. All right. Hey, guys. How's it going? Inside a nearby nature center. Does anybody know what we're learning about today? Young visitors get a sense of how the wildlife living in this ecosystem prepare for the upcoming winter. They migrate or they move. What are some other things that animals might do? Amanda Philippi specializes in guiding the next generation of explorers. So here you go. And she's hoping to give them the same love for the area that she developed when she first came here. I packed up my car, got a job out here about seven years ago, and expecting it to look like a majority of the state kind of flat, a lot of crop grounds. Um, but when you come up over those hills, you see those rocky buttes and those pine woodlands, and it's just different from the rest of the state. And it kind of gives you a little bit of some goosebumps. This has some unique geological formations that's considered a biologically unique landscape in the state of Nebraska. It's the only place in the state where you're going to find these type of formations, these type of habitats, other critters, so it has everything you need in one small little place. The state recreation area has nearly four miles in trails and a thousand acres in all, but the actual landscape of the Wildcat Hills extends much further. It's absolutely unique. The feature, the Wildcat Hills runs 35 to 40 miles long. It runs through three different counties in the Nebraska Panhandle. You would have to drive a long ways to find anything like this. As a rangeland ecologist, Pat Reese has an intimate relationship with the land. Now, within the Great Plains, it's extremely rare to find combinations of the species that are here. For example, when we talk about the mountain species, we have a lot of ponderosa pine and Rocky Mountain juniper, a species like mountain mahogany. And on the wildlife side, oh my goodness, I love watching birds, mountain bluebirds, uh, Townsend solitaires, red crossbills. It's just absolutely amazing the diversity of wildlife and landscape that, that we have in this area. Having special access to areas like this is just one of the perks of Pat's job. But in the past 20 years, a group of conservationists has quietly acquired an additional 20,000 acres in the Wildcat Hills for the public to enjoy. The goal is to keep this wildlife-rich corridor wild. When you go to the Front Range of Colorado and you see how housing development has moved way up into those montane environments, the same concern is very real here. But the conservation organizations are hopeful uh, that they are, uh, would be able to put a large enough contiguous acreage under common management so that they can sustain the wonderful diversity that we have. We have introduced bighorn sheep in the Wildcat Hills now. We have native populations of deer and elk, and every once in a while we actually have a moose. This ecosystem is a tremendous environment for bobcats, and we have our resident mountain lion population. I see mountain lion signs, I see mountain lion scat, I see mountain lion kills. I think we, could, we might, let's try and climb all the way out. All right, let me put my camera away. For Bob Smith, who manages much of the land for the conservation group, this place is something special. I'm third generation here. This Clyde River Basin was formed from people that care about the landscapes and conservation, and I think it was important for us to give back to the community. We grew up with the best of the best and things have changed and I think that having land like this for everybody to enjoy where they don't have to pay fees to hunt or to hike, it's real special. For now, there are few trails, but the existing two-track ranch roads provide quick entry into the wilderness 
by foot, bike, or animal. A lot of people don't know these places exist. Good girl. In 20 years of riding these trails, the last 10 with her trusty mule, Peg, Karen Johnson has seen only a handful of other riders. I just love being out here. It's very relaxing. You don't think about the grocery lists or, or what you have to do next. You're just out here, and the pine tree smell is wonderful. You have wildflowers, you know, in the spring that come out. We've seen coyote out here, turkeys, raccoon. I mean, I've seen a fox before. I had moose prints outside my house just in the past months. And it's kind of the anticipation, I guess, for me of what we're gonna see around the corner. You know, what's gonna be there this time? Is it the wildlife? Is it the flowers? It's just, it's a sanctuary, I guess, for me. Even for Bob and Pat, who've spent years exploring the area, there are still discoveries to be had. And that's one of the things that's so fascinating about the Wildcat Hills. You really don't know what you're going to see when you get around the next bend. What do you think that is? That is quite a find. Looks old, doesn't it? Hey, yeah, I wonder what it is. Oh, gosh, Ooh. look at that. That's the base to a bison horn right there. It sure is. So that's a real nice find. Well, I think we'll leave it here for somebody else to find. How about I what take, do you I'll take a picture of it before we leave the draw. Great. And for Pat, these hills are not only his office, but also a place to get away and see old friends. I just like to look around every corner and behind every tree as I go. So many of these plant species are like friends. And sometimes you don't get to see your friends every year because they need to have rain and it's not there every year. So when you see an old friend you haven't seen for two or three years, you sit down. It's not such a terrible thing not to think about anything to sit and just enjoy the wind, the breeze, to just simply enjoy.